Hey guys, so uh, we got some parts for the 12 valve build. The pistons finally came in. So I've already put the, uh, I've already checked the ring gaps um, on these pistons. We're gonna check a set of ring gaps um, on the last one. And I got one more piston still in the box. And I've already checked um, my clearances and all that stuff. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys how, how I check oil clearance. Um, and then, yeah, so we're gonna do that. So. Um, and I'll show putting the piston and stuff on. I have showed this in another video, but uh, just for the guys that aren't watching the other series, um, I'll show you on this one. So basically all, all I do, um, I don't use, I sometimes do use it, but I don't always use it. Um, for this one, I'm not going to, but what I do is you're checking this diameter in here and it's with the dial bore gauge. So we're gonna stick the dial bore gauge in here. This is a really long one for actually doing this, but so with the dial bore gauge, let's see if I can get this into frame here. So we're three and a half thou oil clearance, according to what the rod was for, for this one. Well, actually all of them were the same anyway, so doesn't really matter as far as that goes but so that's how so basically bearing in torqued um, and then you check this diameter to see what it is and you need to do that with a dial bore gauge if you're going to do it that way and then you use a micrometer on your crankshaft um, to do the same thing check it so you take you take that measurement set your dial bore gauge for that measurement and then check this size with the dial bore gauge see what the difference is so on this one we're three and a half thou oil clearance which is more than sufficient for what we're doing on this one a little on, on the higher end of spec but i'm okay on the higher end of spec um for this one's not going to be crazy power but it will wing 4,000 rpm so a little extra oil clearance won't hurt anything so um i guess putting bearing shells in i guess i put them all in already um i'll pop a couple out here quick so Doing a bearing shell, they're all the same um, as far as this goes. You wanna make sure the, the surface is clean, there's nothing in the surface. And then what I do is I always roll the tang in first and then push the bearing in with your finger on this side. And then you just, you know, you get it in there and make sure everything's lined up, make sure, you know, it's nothing funky about it. All the, you know, the, the widths and all that stuff are right. Um, and then you do the same thing on the rods. So not rocket science by any stretch of the imagination. But what we'll do here is something to note when you're torquing rods, you need to make sure you need to make sure you put a drop of oil on this and then a drop of oil on this uh, flange face. Make sure you're not getting any metal on metal contact. That just needs to be generic oil. Doesn't need to be anything special. Um, pistons we're using on this one. Your part number is 224-3513 in 20 thou. So unboxing the piston, these are the circlips that go into um, the piston. And these are just small bolt pistons, nothing crazy about them. Like I said, stock engine, stockish engine. Um, something I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to go bring, take you over to um, show you the ring gap setup, how we're going to do ring gap, and then we'll come back, we'll put the rings onto this piston, we'll put the rod in this piston, um, and then uh, I will probably, we'll call it good for this video, because you probably, yeah, we'll be called good for this video, and then tomorrow um, I will show putting the pistons in, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So doing ring gap, 
there again, not rocket science. By any stretch of the imagination, you're gonna roll, you're gonna take your ring, this is the top ring, and you roll it down inside there, and then you need it to be flat. You need it to be flat inside that surface, or straight, I should say, not flat, straight. An easy way to do that is to take the piston and you can just put it, there is tools for doing it as well, but you can just slide it down a little bit in there. Then you take a feeler gauge, so on that number one, you are going to be 16 to 28 thou um, ring gap. And then that right there is a 16 thou, and it fits in there no problem as far as the ring gap goes. So literally all you're doing is, is just taking the, the, with the ring gap there, you're taking it and sliding it in that gap. And it can be snug, but you don't want it like, you have to, don't want to force it. I'm not, I don't have to force it in there. Um, the other ones, this is the last set, so I haven't gapped this set. Yet. So where I'm actually going to, I'm, I'm going to open this one up a little bit. So it's a little on the tight side. And what we'll do is we're going to do the same thing with the second ring. See what the gap is on that one. Now the gaps, uh, so the, the top ring gap, your spec, your factory spec is 16 to 28. And then on the second one, you're 10 to 21. Which I can already tell on this one is the ring gap is good because you can tell by the size of it. Yeah, we're good. It's actually probably it's bigger than spec, but that's fine. I'm okay with bigger than spec. But on this one, we are going to have to open this one up a little bit. So we'll go over to the over to our cart here. So something you want to note when you're grinding rings, this is a ring file, is you want to make sure that you keep this edge perfectly flat and you need to deburr it afterwards with this edge perfectly flat. And then I like to, yeah, you have to turn the ring file toward or towards the inside of the ring because you can chip the ring and you don't want to chip the ring. So. Usually I'll bolt this down, but I already unbolted it, so we'll just fight through one here. And then basically all you have to do is if you take this and you press the ring together, that'll tell you whether your two surfaces are flat because they'll butt up perfectly. And then all you gotta do is just take a file. This is a pretty, it's not a coarse file, pretty fine file and just take that sharp edge off. You wanna take that sharp edge off or it'll mark the cylinder up on you. And I usually check to make sure that the rings don't have a sharp edge on them anyway, because even sometimes factory rings will have a sharper edge than you really want to have on there. So it doesn't hurt just to take a file and just rub it across and uh, make sure that they're good. So now we'll go back over to the block here. And, oops. 
roll that ring back in there and that's how I, I always do it like that you just slide it in there like that piston back down and I just go if you're doing it like this I just go off of how how deep the ring land is and you just make the ring land square all the way around not rocket science 25,000 is not going to fit because I didn't open it that much I had the right. Apparently, it's time to go home. Apparently, can't see. No, still need to go more. <laughs> 